Ah, ah. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you very much for coming. So today we will have a presentation about bioceramic sealers. And first of all, I would like to introduce our speaker. And our speaker today is very famous Dr. Walter Vargas Obanda from Costa Rica. So he is a specialist in endodontist and also microscope. He's a professional in microscope. And uh, yes, he famous not only in Costa Rica, but globally. So please enjoy it and have a good time. Thank you. Welcome. Very famous Walter Vargas. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. So it's a pleasure to share with you all uh, of our clinical approach using bioceramic sealers. I've been using bioceramic sealers since 2015. I start with another brand, and right now I move it to Bericom, like two years ago, in a very close collaboration with the laboratory. So. Many years ago, it was in 2006, I do my postgraduate program in Mexico City at Jody Cutler Institute. And Jody has these images. These images were taken from Walter Hess. They did his research around 1930, almost 100 years ago. The first time that I saw these images, I say, man, this guy was in drugs. What kind of drugs he is using? Because I can realize that kind of anatomies doing by his studies about root canals anatomy. It was amazing. And I say, well, I never had that kind of obturations because I used to use the uh, continuous weight technique using the, the regular salmon, like um, H plus, AH26. This is uh, on a regular basis, and I never have that kind of results on my clinical cases. So I go forward, and then after many, many years improving my techniques, and the improving of the materials that we are using on a regular basis in our clinic, I can do this kind of obturations without any problem. Most of the cases are doing in the same way, sodium hypochlorite, uh, EDTA agitation, sonic ultra uh, ultrasonics, and at the end, what is doing different is the using of a bioceramic sealer on a regular basis. So, right now we have two different kind of bioceramic sealer. One is for regular obturation, so the consistency of the semen is more fluid, and the other one is to repair or to do different things because it's a little more thick, so you can repair some kind of mistakes that we can do or some kind of trouble that we have on a regular basis in our clinic. And I will show you how, how we do. So this is the regular way that I used to do my obturation with the bioceramic sealer. Okay, we use a regular gutta percha cone. You need to fit very well. Most of the time, the complaint of our colleagues is the gutta percha cone doesn't fit well to the canal. But the thing is, canals are so irregular all the time. They are not like ISO. Uh, regulation or ISO uh, uh, norm, and we need to, you know, to adjust the the gutta percha cone to our final shape. Right now, we are on a minimal invasive endodontics, and sometimes we want or we need to do a really small preparation, and we need to have a really good confitting 
to have a very good obturation in our cases. So if we are using, for example, O4 taper uh, file, you will, need, you will need an O4 cone to obturate most of the time because if you use a small uh, gutter perch cone, the, the, the obturation will not uh, fill all the lateral canals and the the apex and a, on a on a good manner or in a good way. I will show you. This is just a plastic cube, but it show you how it works on your clinical cases. So you cut it, and then you remove it, the excess of the garbage can, and then you condense it. And then you are done. I will tell you this. Just before I start to use the bioceramic sealers, the process of the final obturation took around 15 to 20 minutes. Right now, I'm doing around five minutes to, to do the whole obturation. And my assistant, she's very happy because when I tell her we are going to upgrade, he goes like, yeah, it's only five minutes and we are going out to have a coffee, to do some WhatsApp because she loves to be in a WhatsApp all the time. I think it's all around the world the same with our assistants. And it's really easy and really fast. I will show you on a clinical case what is the, the, the thing that I do. I really like to uh, dispense the bioceramic sealer on my glass slab and then I use the cone to, to, to have more uh, semen going inside, going out, do it again and then going inside and then I cut with my heat carrier. This is the way that I did. You don't need to push the heat carrier inside the canal. You only need to cut on the floor of the chamber and that's it. Because the bioceramic cellular is very sensitive for the heating. So you need to be aware not to overheat the bioceramic sealer. And it's a good idea to reapply the bioceramic sealer twice because you are going to have a better coat of the entire wall from the, from the root canal. We, if you are using a microscope, you can see how good you feel the entire space of the root canal. And again, you don't, you don't need to go for too deep inside of the canal because you don't need to overheat the bioceramic cement. Then you remove the excess. And the other thing that I want to show you, I don't know if you remember, but if you are using the, the epoxy resin cements, it's really hard to remove from the pool chamber. You, use, you have to use like uh, alcohol or something, something harder to go forward to do the resin or the closure of your core. Okay, remember, right now we are not leaving like a cotton pellet or something like that. We finish the root canal treatment and we go for, forward to seal the pulp chamber. You can use uh, a resin base or you can use, um, I like to use a, a pulp dent product. It's, it's very close with the bioceramic sealer. It's called, um, What's the name? I, I can't remember. Well, but the thing is, you don't need to bond it because it owns bones without the need of a bonding agent. And it has like self-cure and auto-cure so you can go forward. But the thing is, with the bioceramic sealer, it's really easy to clean the pulp chamber. You only need to use water. You can use the water from your ultrasonic device and you will have a really, really clean uh, pool chamber ready to be uh, filled with your resin. And this is, this is a good advice. If you're using bio bioceramic sealer, the, the, all the walls has to be wet because the material needs water to set, okay? It doesn't have to be fluted, 
because it will be a lot of water, but it doesn't have to be dry. You don't need to use uh, paper points because if you use paper points, you will over dry the canal and the material won't set, okay? What I did or what I do is I, I use an evacuator, a regular evacuator, I like circumet evacuator because uh, you, you can take out most of the water, most of the liquid from, from, the, from the root canal, and they are still moist because the material need the moist to, to, to be set, okay? This is very important. Anatomy, you know, there we have we every day deal with hair anatomies, with difficult anatomies, but if we have a good material, we, we can do a good job most of the time. Um, this is a very interesting case. This is a lower canine with two roots. This is, uh, I, I do a lot of research on a CBCT on my office. I have uh, five publications at the JOE. And I found it a really difficult anatomy to deal with um, a, a lower canine with, with two roots. It's really hard to deal. And sometimes the, the poop chamber or the space to put two cones, to go to perch cones are really difficult. In the, in, in the previous time, doing a, a continuous weight technique was really hard to, to obtain that, uh, to, 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 feel, uh, to uh, feel this kind of anatomies is really hard. Like this. And for example, what, what is more easy than to do an upper incisor? Okay, this case came to my office. It was done with a, by a colleague, but the, pa the patient is still in pain. I saw something wrong like this. There is a radiolucency right there. So I search for another thing and I found another root on, on a lateral incisor. Okay, there is, a, there is a huge lesion. I use the, uh, the bioceramic sealer, and after a few months, complete healing around the peripical uh, tissues. Again, difficult anatomies. We have this kind of anatomies, uh, and we can do things like that. Kind of busy. Right now, I repeat, we are on a minimal invasive endodontics. We are trying to remove less material, some dental material for our tooth. And we are trying to do as best as possible. Uh, sometimes, if you're trying to do a continuous weight technique, it's really difficult to do this. Sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes you are on your lucky day. Okay, this is not the real life. Believe me, this is not the real life. I, it was done by me, but I'm a, a lucky guy sometimes, and I have a lucky days. I will show you the other side of the moon, because, you know, the moon has two sides. Okay, what I did. This is the, um, the microopical surgery. So is, this is a plastic tube. So I was trying to put the bioceramic sealer this is the putty consistency. This is different. It's the same material, but it's different consistency. This is for apical surgery. It was um, then you you put on the on the apiectomy, and then you plug. Use the instrument to burn it. and then you are done. Easy. This is a, a, re, a very good tip. We have a lot of these instruments in our office. They, they are called microbrush. It's really good to have many different microbrush because sometimes you need a, the thinner, you, sometimes you need a bigger one all the time. But as much as you get, 
the, the most that you need, okay? You can use this on a different ways, different uh, sizes, different uh, figures. And you, after that, you can use it. You get a little bit wet, and then you can burn it on your apical surgery. OK. Here we go to the real life. This is a real surgery. Then after you do the apiectomy, you, put, you use your bioceramic sealer. So, believe me, this is uh, really, really easy. Remember the old time when I used to use the MTA? MTA was a nightmare. It was really hard to manage. Right now, the new material is the same, the same biology, biology um, the, uh, thing, but the handle of the material is really, really good and really, really easy to work with. Then you burn it, and you are done. Okay, we have many different uh, ways to use that, uh, that material. I will, I will show you this. Um, when you have a, uh, for, uh, a perforation on the forcation of the tooth, in, in the early years, it was a nightmare because we have to use amalgam or whatever, and you are not pretty sure that it's going to work. You have to go to the church and pray for your patient and for, for the tooth of your patient because you can realize if it's going to heal or not. Right now, with this material, you are pretty sure it will heal because they are very biocompatible and it will, it will be okay. The patient will be okay because sometimes we deal with a really hard cases, calcified cases, um, you know, many, many, you know, more than me, how, how difficult could be. Okay, again, the micro brush will help us a lot to put the bioceramic sealer on the right side of the pulpal forcation. Uh, perforation. And then you can use um, paper point also to help you to push the material into the perforation. You can use the, the other side of the, of the paper point will be uh, help more because you have more force to push the material against the periodontal ligament. This is how it looks. And this is our mission all day, saving tooth every day. Okay, sometimes you, ha you have hard cases. I did this case. I did the perforation. But right now we can fix it. So you clean, you clean the surface. You dry, but not over dry, the, the, the surface of the, of the pulp chamber. And then you put the bioceramic sealer right there. And there's no problem. You will save the tooth. Okay, I told, I, I show you the good one. This is the bad one. This is my case also, and this is it, this is a, a bad date at the office. So it was not not that um, difficult case, but I did a huge mistake. I did a full uh, perforation of the pulp chamber. This is sodium hydroxide that I put uh, till I uh, rest. You know, I go for water and thinking what I'm going to, to do to save the tooth. So the next day, the patient came back 
This is uh, calcium hydroxide. I adjust the cones. And I use the bioceramic sealer putty consistency on the poop chamber. And everything will be OK. The patient will be OK. We save the tooth. So don't worry about it. Right now, we have really good materials in our offices. Remember, always have many of those. They will help you a lot of the time. The thing is, they are really cheap. You don't need to spend a lot of money on that things, and that will help you a lot to manage the bioceramic sealers. OK, we can use it also in pulp regeneration. If you have a pulp sposure, you use the bioceramic sealer right here. And after that, you can use a glass genomer. And then you, you did the final restoration without a problem. So there are no complaint. There is no pain. People, uh, the patient will be OK without a problem. So you need to be very clear that you already did the pulp test, OK? If the pulp is OK, everything's going to be OK, OK? But if they have like a not, not a good response from the, from the pulp, you, you need to go forward for the root canal treatment. But if, if it was OK, you did this uh, pulp capping, and the two will long many, many, many years. OK, this is a case also. You can see huge lesion right here. It's a really huge lesion. So it's, it's a good idea always to use a calcium hydroxide to um, higher the pH from the tissue. Because we, when we have infection, the pH right here is around 1 or 2. And if we have a really lower pH, the bioceramic sealer won't set. You need to increase the pH to set the bioceramic sealer. So you, you put some uh, calcium hydroxide, wait one week. And then after that, you make the final obturation. OK, and we start to make the follow-up of our cases, because it's very important to make the follow-up. This is a 2019, and right now, 2022. Before and after. So we save another tooth. The thing is, uh, doctor, do you think if you use another kind of material, it will be the same? Yeah, it could be the same. But the thing is, right now, we are having faster results. I can show you many cases, three, four, six months follow-ups with excellent healing. OK, this is, this is a good thing with the bioceramics. OK, this is another, another case. In many cases, you, you know, we love kids. And right now, kids have accidents. They are, you know, of the, of the party, whatever, and always the front tooth, always. And the, the, the ma'am, mom and dad came into your office yelling and crying, oh, what's going to happen with the front tooth of my kid? What we can do, we need to save. OK, right now, we can save it. In the early years, with the MTA, we can also save it. But the tooth became gray or dark. With the new materials, the real color will last many, many, many years without changes. And this is the good thing for our kids and the kids from our patients. This is a, a final case. This is a, a case came to my office. It's not good sealed. You can see a big lesion right there. So we remove all the old feeling. And we start with the, with the K files, removing all the things. And we do, uh, this is a, so, a calcium hydroxide. And I try to do an apical matrix to stop the material inside of the root canal. So, so this is the final case.
So you can see some material right here, don't worry about it. It's really biocompatible. It will work and it will help to faster healing around the, the tissue. So before and after, it was around six months. It's really, really fast healing. And this is the final tip for you. Remember to take home. It has to be wet to set the bioceramic sealer. Not fluted, not dry, just wet. So thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. You can contact through the WhatsApp. Yeah, please. What's the optimum time uh, for the calcium hydroxide before the final set? And do you do any lateral condensation? OK. Um, most of the time, I, I, I don't do lateral condensation. I only push the, you know, the, the part of the gutta percha over the floor chamber with, with the hand plugger, and that's it. And what was the other, the other question about? OK. I really like eight days. Eight days. It could be two weeks, 15 days, but the effect from the calcium hydroxide will decrease really fast after eight days. So, I prefer eight days. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't need to wait it. There there's a very important uh, glass genomer. I if you write to me, I will send you the 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 name of the brand. Yeah. Be because I can't remember the name. It's from Pulp Dent. Yeah, and they have a really nice glass uh, uh, number. Yep. Okay, you don't need to. You don't need to set the. You know the salmon, but. It depends the, the clinical situation. If you have a huge infection, yes. you need to put calcium hydroxide and wait eight days at least, okay? Sometimes you need to do an apical plug. It could be with collagen, with, um, uh, we use uh, cola, cola tape or some sponge from, from, from collagen. You can use the cheapest that you can find it because you only need it to avoid to strew the material through the periapical tissues. If you strew the material, it doesn't matter because it will make um, like a tissue formation. They, they have sinalin. For, for the osteo osteoblasts and everything. So, but you know, sometimes it doesn't look beautiful, yes, but, okay. but, but it, it will work without a problem. Yes, okay. you. You're welcome. Yeah, tell me. Hi. Hello, hello. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh.